Hello, Dr. Steven Zemanik here. I want to welcome you to 2022. <laughs> That's right. We made it. 2021 was an eventful year, to say the least. Uh, I think most of us were fairly well, I don't know, under the impression that following 2020, this last year, 21, was going to be a return to normal. <laughs> we were surprised. A friend of mine described living through 2021 as being in a toxic relationship with the entire universe. <laughs> it was rough. A lot of things that we thought would never happen not only happened, but then happened again and again and again. When we come to the end of something like 2021 and get ready for 22, uh, there is a little bit of a shell shock, a little bit of concern, uh, a little bit of weariness that just sort of overtakes our entire being, a little concern of how in the world are we gonna do this, what's gonna happen next, all that sort of stuff. You got two options really as we go into 2022 and that's what I wanna talk with you about today. 2021 did not destroy us. We have an opportunity this year to invest in a way that's gonna change our lives for the better. We can't control the things that go on around us. I really wish we could. A lot of life, as we saw last year, is simply out of our control. So how do we, as followers of Jesus, in the midst of chaos and destruction and frustration, live lifestyles that are marked with joy, with peace, and a genuine sense of purpose as we get into this next year? Proverbs chapter 3 provides us some key elements. These are not band-aids, they're not quick fixes, they're not cute little sayings that'll help perk your spirit and make you have a smile on your face for a few minutes as you pretend everything is just going to be okay now that the calendar is switched over. No, these are genuine biblical principles that have been proven over time to work. And if you will implement these principles into your life, you're going to find in 2022, whatever happens, your life will be marked with joy, with peace, and with purpose. Let me walk through these with you, and we're going to do it quickly because video is not nearly as much fun as being live face-to-face -face in a congregational setting. So, plus side, you won't have to listen to me as long as you would. Well, I say that. We'll see what happens. Let me read for you the first couple of verses here in this amazing book of Proverbs. Chapter 3. Let me just start with the first two verses. Notice, he says, My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. Here's the payoff. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Did, did you catch the payoff? I like the payoff. Three of them. Length of days, now it doesn't mean your days just seem long and arduous. It means that you have an opportunity to live because you haven't made some of the foolish decisions you would have otherwise. The second phrase is really remarkable. And years of life. Now, some commentators will tell you that years of life is just another way of saying longevity. I don't believe that's true. And thankfully, a number of really sharp commentators agree with me. Who knew? Years of life here isn't referring to the length of days. It's referring to life in those days. We are all going to live as long as we do. But how many of us are truly going to have life for the time that we get to live? This principle that we're about to share will allow you to have life in your years. And then the third one, and peace, they will add to you. We all need peace. Uh, coming through 2021 and all of us feeling a bit shell-shocked, some PTSD for the entire nation, we need to have some peace. How do we do it? I already gave you the answer, but you were not listening. To be fair, I wasn't incredibly clear. Verse 1 is the answer to how to have length of days, how to have life in your years, and how to have peace. Notice again what he says. Do not forget my teachings but let your heart keep my commandments. What he's telling us here is very simply this. If you want to have joy, peace, and purpose in 2022, it begins by investing yourself into Bible study. I know, that's so old school. We are surrounded with all types of entertainment options. 
We're surrounded with all kinds of gadgets and things that can help us to escape the pains of reality for a moment. And I am not one of those guys who thinks there's anything wrong with that. There are some of those people out there and I just feel sorry for them. Those are great tools to get to escape for a minute or two and enjoy a wonderful video on the internet. But they don't provide the things we need to live a life that is sustained by joy, peace, and purpose. We have to go back to the foundation. And the foundation for those things is found by investing ourselves into studying the Bible for ourselves. Yes, we do that for those of us who attend church on Sundays and those midweek services and things where we study it together. But we need to do it for ourselves. We need to find a Bible, some of us. The others of us may need to blow the dust off it, but all of us need to open it up again and begin to read and consider the things that are written on those pages. The Bible is the book provided by God, yes, through people. It didn't just fall out of heaven in King James Version. But it is provided by God for people. It gives us the answers, the keys that we need to survive, and it gives us the things we need to hold on to hope and to faith and to health. Your mental health is much determined by how you invest your life in the Bible. The more you invest your life into Bible study, the more you're going to understand your place in the world, the more you're going to understand all the devastating events that have occurred over 2021 and may very well occur in 22. The more you're going to understand God's unfailing, not just love, but his commitment to the purpose for which he has put you here. You will find life for your days and you'll find peace of mind as you invest yourself into Bible study. The next one's in verses three and four. Verse three says, for, I'm sorry, do not let kindness and truth leave you. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Now, here's what we're supposed to do. If you want to have a good quality year, that's marked with joy, peace, and purpose. Not only do we study our Bible, but we need to invest ourselves. Some of you are just going to be really angry. I know, I apologize up front. But we need to invest ourselves in showing kindness to other people. Notice what he says again. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. In the midst of our political situations where everything is politicized, I mean, to the point of which type of rice you buy now is a political statement and what kind of syrup you use is a political statement. And people even trying to politicize the color of your skin as to whether or not you're inherently evil if you don't have enough pigmentation in your skin. Everything around us has been compromised by a political view of life. And as a result of that, many Christians, uh, unaware that they're doing it, begin to view life through those kinds of lenses and us versus them. And a lack of genuine kindness on the part of Christians is being seen in some quarters. If you want to live with joy, peace, and purpose, fully aware that you cannot control many of the things around you, we have to invest ourselves, strategically choose not to forget kindness and truth. Another way to say this is to show love and truth at the same time. Everybody's going through struggles. Everybody's trying to find their way in life. Everybody's dealing with the issues that are surrounding them and impacting them, and at sometimes enveloping them in such a way that they are controlled by the darkness and the despair around them. You, as a Christian, get to be a point of hope and kindness to them. Notice it doesn't say develop it. The developing it happens as we study God's word. It says choose not to let go of it. When people say things inappropriate, when people choose to be mean, we have the right as Christians to choose to show kindness and truth. And it's important that we hold both of these together because kindness without truth is just some sort of let's all just sing kumbaya and get along and watch the building burn down while we sit in the living room. 
truth without kindness might be saying facts that are real, but they're saying them in such a way that the people who hear them only hear hatred and vile. We need to speak the truth. And here's the truth. Every single one of us without God is lost. Our lives are meaningless. There is no joy, no peace, no sense of purpose without Jesus. That's the truth. And the truth is none of us are good enough for God. But God, who is so good, gave his son Jesus to die, rise from the dead, so that if we give our lives to him, he forgives us of everything we've done wrong, and we can find joy, peace, and purpose in this life. That's truth. But kindness is not only the words we say, but the attitude and the actions we take when we don't just speak the truth, but we live the truth. We need to choose to invest ourselves in showing kindness to others. Notice verse four gives us the payoff. For you will find favor and good repute or good reputation. And notice where we find it, favor, and a good reputation is found when we live in kindness and truth. Here's how it's where it's found. In the sight of God and of people. And notice the order there. God is placed first. Because no matter how kind you are in your truthful living, there will always be somebody so dissuaded by their anger and their hatred and their misery that they will still choose to try to destroy you. That's the way the world is. But God, who sees your heart will give you favor. Favor is those unmerited gifts that you need to make it through life. Favor and a good reputation in the sight of God. You and I, when we choose to invest in kindness, are actually investing in the way God sees us. He will pour his favor out on us and he will view us with a good reputation. And he will also translate that into the way many people view us as well. We will find even with some who dislike us that they will respect us. Kindness is the remedy for the disaster that we have turned America into over the last few decades and especially the last two years. So you want joy, peace, and purpose? starts with investing yourself in Bible study. It continues by investing ourselves in showing kindness, choosing to show kindness. Let me give you another one here in verses five and six. We need to invest ourselves in trusting God. Let me read to you verse five. This is probably, <laughs> I know, I shouldn't laugh and I shouldn't say things like this because it sounds mean. I don't mean it that way. But this is probably the only section in the entire chapter that many people who attend church even know. Most of them can't find it, but they know it. So let me read to you a very familiar verse. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Trust in the Lord. If there's ever been an opportunity to be distrustful of a good and loving God, 20 and 21 may have provided evidence for that. But they only provide evidence if you haven't read the scriptures. When we invest ourselves in studying the scriptures and we live kindly and with truth, we understand that trusting God doesn't mean that the world works out the way we want it. What it means is the world is working out the way God planned it. There is a culmination to all of this. Where we're at is not the end. It is a part of the process to get us to the end of what God has in store later. And we need to invest ourselves in trusting God. Often we'll say thank you when God does something we really like. But then we will, if we're super spiritual, just ignore him because nobody wants to be mean to God. But if we're in a really rough mood, we'll begin to blame God for all of the bad things that are going on in our life. Where are you, Lord? Why aren't you fixing this? Lord, how many times do I have to pray? Everybody does it. You need proof? The book of Psalms is filled with people doing it. When we learn to invest ourselves in God, we learn to trust God and not lean on our own understanding. Let me read it to you again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust him. 
doesn't mean figure him out, doesn't mean understand where he's taking you, and doesn't mean to comprehend what's taking place. It just simply means I've been studying my Bible, I've been living in kindness and truth, I have a sense of joy, peace, and purpose. I don't know what's going on, how long it's going to last, but I do know this, God, according to his word, is faithful and true. God has a plan and I'm a part of it. Lord, I trust you with my whole heart. And notice, do not lean on your own understanding. One of the tragedies of 21 was a number of good folks who love God beginning to lean on their own understanding and to begin to see regular church attendance as something that's optional instead of something that's necessary. They began to see that always living for God publicly was something that is a good idea in general, but not always beneficial. They began to lean on their own understanding, and as a result, they fell farther and farther away from where God wanted them to be. And what this produced was a decreasing amount of joy, peace, and purpose in their lives. Joy, peace, and purpose are developed by trusting God fully. If God says this is how we're to live, guess what? This is how we're to live. And we pour our lives into that kind of a lifestyle. We just trust him. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. And here's the payoff. Here's the payoff you have to look forward to this year. He will make your paths straight. I'll be honest, there are times during 21 that I thought, wish it would have said, and he will pick you up off this path and put you on a different one. <laughs> uh, it doesn't say that, and he didn't do it for me. But it does say he'll make your path straight. That there will be a path for you to follow from where you are to where he intends you to be. You're going to walk with him through the situations. He will make your path straight. You want joy, peace, and purpose this year? Invest yourself in Bible study. Invest yourself in showing kindness to others. Invest yourself in trusting God. Let me give you another one. Verse 5, and, or sorry, verse 7 and 8. Invest yourself in developing humility. Notice what it says, 7 and 8. Do not be wise in your own eyes. If I were to write a Zemanic's paraphrase, um, it's not an exact representation of the Hebrew, but I would put something like, stop being an arrogant jerk. It's not what it says. It's the idea. But it does actually say, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. That's humility. Humility is understanding we do not have all of the answers. Humility is understanding that there are so many things we just don't understand. We are not the epicenter of all knowledge and all wisdom. It also includes choosing to turn away from those things that God told us not to do. Often during very difficult times, such as 21, people will be turned to old vices as a way of finding a way of escape. Those are evil things. They're things that bring destruction, not build up. They're things that destroy peace, don't bring peace. And what the Lord says is humility says, even though I'm looking for a way of escape, I'm choosing not to be wise in my own eyes, an arrogant jerk, and I'm choosing to turn away from the things I'm not supposed to do, and I'm choosing to turn back toward what God told me to do. Here's the payoff in verse 8. It will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. For those of you who are involved in the counseling ministries, you're very aware of this verse and what it implies. If you're a, a normal person like me and not involved in that kind of uh, ministry, sometimes this verse will miss the impact for you. And so I'll talk to you the way that a counselor would here just for a minute. This phrase, healing to your body and refreshment to your bones, is not simply dealing with a physical Health. This is the overall, total and complete well-being of who you are. Spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically, and relationally. This is a healing lifestyle. When we choose to be humble in our lifestyle, acknowledge God as the one who knows what's best, and choose to follow Him in that. When we choose not to view ourselves as better than those around us, the Lord will provide for us a complete, holistic healing experience. We will live whole, 
healthy lives. And if there's anything that we need more in 2022, I don't know what it could be right now. So you want to live better in 22 than you did in 21. You want to be able to walk through 2022 with a lifestyle that has been marked by joy, by peace, and by purpose. Here are four simple principles that will allow you to do that. Invest yourself again into Bible study. Invest yourself again into showing kindness to others. Invest yourself again in trusting God. I dare say, and I know I shouldn't, but what are they going to do, kick me off again? <laughs> I shouldn't say it. I'm going to say it. Forgive me if I offend you. That's not my point. But if Christians this last year trusted God as much as they trusted the CDC and the information that's come from governmental outlets, I wonder how much peace, joy, and purpose would have marked our lives not being mean to those. They're doing the very best they can with the limited information that they have. But let's trust God. If God says something is good for your life, do it. If God says something is wrong for your life, stop doing it. Trust God. And finally, develop humility. You're not the center of the universe, but God who created the universe loves you and does keep you as the center or the apple of his eye. Know your place and love God with humility. If you're watching this and you're not a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, these things can be yours because Jesus died, rose from the dead, so that he could save you from your sin and give you a life that is marked with joy, peace, and purpose. And when you die, hell is not your destiny, but heaven is. So if you're ready to give your life to Jesus, I ask you to pray this with me very quickly. Pray, Father, forgive me for living my life as if you don't matter. Come into my life and be my God. I'll serve you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, follower of Jesus, 2022 is here, like it or not. We don't know what's going to happen, and we can't control most of what's going to happen, but we can control these four aspects of our life. And if you're willing to do it, you will not only end the year better than you started, but you will have impacted in a positive way the lives of those around you. This is your mission. I hope you choose to take it. Whatever you're doing today, I'm gonna to ask you to remember two very important things. Number one, God loves you very much. And number two, I'm proud to be your pastor. The Lord be with you.